I like to pray, and I like to say that if God is to give me a billion, everyone wants the money, everyone wants the fortune, so much for us to try to work. But if God is going to give me a billion francs and I cannot give 50 million francs to a young person to help him do something without going out, I pray to God that he does not give me that billion. I think I didn't have time to come and chat with you. And I am very happy about that. And a very important question for everyone, the security question. The University of Uri, Wavia, Fada, all these universities which are in the red zone, the question turns to the spirit. But there is a solution in court. I admit that I immediately learned that it is more given than Yuri that there is no court at the university. I admit that I just learned it. I didn't know that it lasted for so long. For the security of these institutions and other villages, what I can tell you today, if you noticed, the first measures we took were to correct our effects. Recruiting. So, the VDP, we have increased the effect by doing two classes, the VDP Communo and the VDP National. This means that the municipalities will remain in their municipalities to defend and the nationals will be able to be employed everywhere. The idea is also to gradually convert the youngest to the army after a period of fighting. As far as the army is concerned, I think that there is currently a recruitment process of almost 6,000 men, if I am mistaken. And there will be more, because the challenge of manpower is the most important. The fight is reaching a level where we can no longer afford to put small numbers on the ground. We have stepped up recruitment and training is underway. At the same time, too, the equipment is being acquired so that when it finishes its training, it can be immediately engaged in order to be able to come and secure a number of localities. So the question of security comes down to that. There is a question of manpower, a question of equipment, which is in the process of being resolved, because a fighter doesn't train him in two or three weeks. He needs a minimum of knowledge to be able to cope. And also, the enemy firepower is quite high. We are in the process of equipping ourselves to take at least five to seven times more than his firepower to be able to dominate with our squad. So I can assure you that at the end of the training of these people, which should not be delayed normally, priority will be given to these cities that therefore carry the universities and also to have the presence around the universities so that you are not affected again in your academic activities. That will be our priority. Moreover, as far as Thomas Ankara is concerned, the concern has already been raised by your officials and instructions have already been given to the Minister of Security to generate a force that must be immediately deployed there. With regard to Duri and Waiwia and the other centers, you may have noticed that we have redrawn the territory because we were in three regions and it doesn't allow us to quadruple effectively. We have redivided and created what is called the grouping of forces. 
And I think that for those who are in Dury, they must soon see the development. Why we are too, I have even seen a march forward to demand more safety, which is normal. In the coming hours, you'll also see what's going to happen around you. So right now, we can't detail all the strategy that's in place, but the tactical part, we're putting everything in place. In order for the units to be able to cope with it, and moreover, the units are in the process of proving something exceptional, of coping with the minimum they have. But we are also doing everything we can to ensure that they have the necessary equipment. So if I can give you a date for you to take over the court, I cannot say exactly what date it is. But I can tell you that by February, normally, a wave should have finished its formation and that we will inject into the field. They finish at the end of January and February, they will be injected into the field. And I can't say that we start with Dori or Waiwia or Degu or all these areas, his thing. But we are not going to detail the plan here, but we will do everything so that in the coming days there you are safe and you can go back and resume the course. That is what I can assure you. And that's the case for all universities. With regard to the question by Nancy Bonney, I think it relates to all universities. The number of dishes that is insufficient and the number of dishes with the IDPs today is not easy, I admit. I know that many students also have parents to place, and that makes it difficult. Parents cannot support, and it is you who are now obliged to support. I recognize that all this is complicated, but the corollary of all this is this war. And we have to fight so that in the coming days the temperature can drop and allow people to resume activities a little so that everyone can support the other. But all IDPs from elsewhere today we are in the process of launching an appeal to be able to, as you may have noticed, there are many municipalities. We make the efforts to refuel, to live them, because that is what people are currently looking to eat first. We are fortunate that they do not rain at first, but we need to be able to meet these nutrition needs for all IDPs, and the effort is being put into that at the moment. We are in the process of looking for as many trucks as possible. Men are ready to engage, especially when it comes to bringing food to the people. They have no fatigue, they have no respite. And after that, we are also going to think about rehousing and redefining the employment of certain IDPs. And as far as students are concerned, it will be a matter of finding ways for these people to be able to integrate in the student society and be able to return to school. The challenge is enormous, I admit. There is a chance that Eric asked me the question, what courage did you have to take such a country? I said, this is my homeland. We are not going to take courage. The question of infrastructure has become known, the laboratories, the library, the internet. I think the internet will be resolved. Fortunately, the minister is here, as she has heard. I think that for the University of Vogadougou too, it is a concern, fiber optics. In any case, the work is ongoing. I think the connection is different. I hope that by June like this, it must be okay with regard to the Internet. I hope so. With regard to laboratories and other effects, I recently discussed with a number of ministers our new cooperation with certain countries. Every time we go to a country for a new cooperation, I like to include the teaching component so that we can find scholarships, so that students can go and improve certain technologies and come back, and above all, so that we can acquire laboratory equipment, because I myself come from here, I do geology, and I know what the laboratory is. 
I know that in all areas you need it, and in our future partnerships, so we are focusing on that so that we can re-equip our universities a little bit, our schools, so that students can really do that, through this, that you can really look for and develop something new. How to adapt education is a very good question. I was answering the question with the elders. The new Minister for Youth, who was installed yesterday, received a mission to be able to reform the educational systems with his comrades in higher education and in basic education. Because Burkina Faso is finishing the final year of high school, the destination is university. Why not in the meantime be able to professionalize training so that from one level, others will be able to directly be employed and that university is a choice and not necessarily. It is a process that has begun, and he has received the mission, so he will quickly get to work with his other comrades to carry out his reforms. With regard to enlistment to be a VDP, I am very moved, very happy to see that we do not want it. But I have seen in a country at a given level of war, they have had to close universities, enlist students, train them, and deal with the threat. We hope that we will not get to that point. I am particularly pleased to see that there are fighters here, that this age still exists among the students. We'll study and see, but we don't want to hire you to take Kalashnikovs, but we're going to hire you. We're going to hire you for how to make Kalashnikovs. So let us return to the concerns of Thomas Ankara University. This is a concern that has also been raised with the elders, and it is something that I have followed. I think that in October, there was still a fatal accident on the track. On Friday on Passé, if I'm not mistaken, I took the road to go to the BDP training center. I have been able to notice the three tests of this route. So, as of this week, I am going to see with the Minister for Infra-Deafness what can be done as a matter of urgency so that the track can at least become a track again. And also, I was saying for safety, so that has already been taken into account. Let us return to the question of patriotism. Well, fortunately, it comes from you. And I hope that patriotism is the one that drives you the most. Nothing beats the homeland. These young people have already understood that our homeland will never be anywhere else, and that our home is our home here. Those who don't want to fight for the homeland, I think you know them. I don't want you to be violent towards them, but we have to observe them like that, continue to play the role of the erect. But we will find ways and means to go with the patriots towards the influence of our homeland. And this is a very important phenomenon, all the more so because people have called for civic education and everything to be brought back to the level of the universities themselves. But we will find the formula to ensure that the level of patriotism of young people succeeds so that people do not follow in the footsteps of certain people who have really lost everything. Now it is a question of guaranteeing the population of the liberated areas. I can't tell you here. 
If I tell you, it is public. If I am the enemy, I will adapt. You understand? There are many things that we cannot say publicly because we are helping to inform the enemy, to prepare ourselves to counter what we are doing. We prefer to reserve surprises, but remember that the war that is going on is about battles. As you notice, there are days when we lose men, but there are days when we win. Generally, we don't communicate too much since it started. As they say, the purpose of this war is not to kill, but we have no choice. If those who have understood lay down their arms and join, we know what we can do for them. Those who have not understood, we have no choice. We have been forced to fight the fact with the deed, so that is what is here. The reduction in the number of political parties, I believe that there is a comprehensive reform underway. If we do not do it, it will never happen. I think you are the decision makers, you are the young people, you are the decision makers. And we are going to reform so that I think it should be of concern to everyone so that people can unite. I do not think there are 1,000 different ways to develop the bourguinage. There are certainly a lot of programs that cross paths. They must be able to unite in order to make a single program and therefore have parties, really, a reduced number of parties. Or failing that, we will draw up texts with their help to reduce this growing number of political parties. This is the very beginning of the cohesion and unity of the Burgundians. The party leaders must be able to unite, to create something great, to have a clear ideology, and to be able to follow suit. Their aim, therefore, is to carry out ongoing reforms which will be launched to the Prime Minister, who will convince a framework for consultation on these reforms. Look at my faithful companions. You have many followers. They are faithful. So don't worry. The peculiarity between me and my companions is that war is not all bad. War is all very well. It unites the fighter. So through the war, we went through a lot of trials and fires together. We've been through death together many times. It unites much more than anything. So that's the most important thing. So you can be sure that we have been together once in death. It is the strongest bond that can exist, which can easily... Betrayal is money, and it is this aspect that we must be very careful about. I often have a prayer that I like to say and that I continue to do, especially from my current position, because I often do not understand some people who are unable to help others. I like to pray and I like to say that if God is to give me a billion, everyone wants the money, everyone wants the fortune, so much for us to try to work. But if God is going to give me a billion francs and I cannot give 50 million francs to a young person to help him do something without going out, I pray to God that he does not give me that billion. I hope that the same will be true for all young people, that we will never let money get the better of us. We are hungry, we are poor, we have everything, but there is nothing like human dignity.